Section 7 of Library of the World's Best Literature, Ancient and Modern, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Lucy Perry. Library of the World's Best Literature, Ancient and Modern, Volume 1. Section 7. Excerpts of Akkadian, Babylonian, and Assyrian Literature. Translated by Crawford H. Toy. 7. The God Zoo. He sees the badges of rule, his royal crown, his raiment divine. On the tablets of fate of the gods, Zoo fixes his look. On the father of the gods, the god of Duranki, Zoo fixes his gaze. Lust after rule enters into his soul. I will take the tablets of fate of the gods, will determine the oracle of all the gods. Will set up my throne, all orders control. Will rule all the heavenly spirits. His heart was set on combat. At the entrance of the hall he stands, waiting the break of day, when Bel dispensed the tender reins, sat on his throne, put off his crown. He snatched the tablets of fate from his hands, seized the power, the control of commands. Down flew Zu, in a mountain he hid. There was anguish and crying. On the earth Bel poured out his wrath. Anu opened his mouth and spake, said to the gods, his children, Who will conquer Zu? Great shall be his name among the dwellers of all lands. They call for a man, the mighty, Anu's son. To him gives Anu command. Up, Raman, my son, thou hero. From thine attack desist not. Conquer Zu with thy weapons, that thy name may be great in the assembly of the great gods. Among the gods thy brethren, none shall be thy equal. Thy shrines on high shall be built. Found these cities in all the world. Thy cities shall reach to the mountain of the world. Show thyself strong for the gods, strong be thy name. To anew his father's command, Raman answered and spake. My father, who shall come to the inaccessible mound? Who is like unto Zu among the gods thy sons? The tablets of fate he has snatched from his hands. Seized on the power, the control of commands. Zu has fled, and hides in his mountain. The rest is lost. 8. Adapa and the South Wind Under the water the South Wind blew him, Sunk him to the home of the fishes. O South Wind, ill hast thou used me, Thy wings I will break. As thus with his mouth he spake, The wings of the South Wind were broken. Seven days long the south wind over the earth blew no more. To his messenger, Illa Abrat, Anu then spake thus, Why for seven days long blows the south wind no more on the earth? His messenger, Illa Abrat, answered and said, My lord Adapa, Ea's son, hath broken the wings of the south wind. When Anu heard these words, Aha! he cried, and went forth. Ea, the ocean god, then directs his son how to proceed in order to avert Anu's wrath. Some lines are mutilated. At the gate of Anu stand. The gods Tammuz and Isida will see thee and ask, Why lookest thou thus, Adapa? For whom wearest thou garments of mourning? From the earth two gods have vanished, therefore do I thus. Who are these two gods, who from the earth have vanished? At each other they will look, Tammuz and Izzada, and lament, a friendly word they will speak to Anu, Anu's sacred face they will show thee. When thou to Anu comest, food of death will be offered thee, eat not thereof. Water of death will be offered thee, drink not thereof. A garment will be offered thee, put it on. Oil will be offered thee, anoint thyself therewith. What I tell thee neglect not, keep my word in mind. Then came Anu's messenger. The wing of the south wind Adapa has broken. Deliver him up to me. Up to the heaven he came. Approach the gate of Anu. At Anu's gate Tammuz and Izida stand. Adapa they see, and, Aha! they cry. O Adapa, wherefore lookest thou thus? For whom wearest thou apparel of mourning? From the earth two gods have vanished. Therefore I wear apparel of mourning. Who are these two gods who from the earth have vanished? At one another look Tammuz and Izida and lament. 
Adapa go hence to Anu. When he came, Anu at him looked, saying, O oh, Adapa, why hast thou broken the south wind's wing? Adapa answered, My lord, for my lord's house I was fishing. In the midst of the sea it was smooth. Then the south wind began to blow. Under it forced me, to the home of the fishes I sank. By this speech Anu's anger is turned away. A beaker he set before him. What shall we offer him? Food of life. Prepare for him that he may eat. Food of life was brought for him, but he ate not. Water of life was brought for him, but he drank not. A garment was brought him, he put it on. Oil they gave him, he anointed himself therewith. Anu looked at him and mourned. And now, Adapa, wherefore hast thou not eaten or drunken? Now canst thou not live for ever. Ian, my lord, commanded me, thou shalt not eat nor drink. 9. Penitential Psalms 1. The Suppliant I, thy servant, full of sin cry to thee, the sinner's earnest prayer thou dost accept, the man on whom thou lookest lives, mistress of all, queen of mankind, merciful one to whom it is good to turn, who acceptest the sigh of the heart. The Priest Because his God and his Goddess are angry, he cries to thee, to him turn thy face, take his hand. The Suppliant Beside thee there is no God to guide me. Look in mercy on me, accept my sigh. Say why do I wait so long? Let thy face be softened. How long, O my lady, may thy kindness be turned to me. Like a dove I mourn, full of sighing. The Priest With sorrow and woe his soul is full of sighing. Tears he sheds, he pours out laments. 2. O mother of the gods, who performest the commands of Bel, who makest the young grass sprout, queen of mankind, creator of all, guide of every birth, mother Ishtar, whose might no god approaches. Exalted mistress, mighty in command, a prayer I will utter, let her do what seems her good. O my lady, make me to know my doing. Food I have not eaten, weeping was my nourishment, water I have not drunk, tears were my drink. My heart has not been joyful, nor my spirits glad. Many are my sins, sorrowful my soul. O my lady, make me to know my doing, make me a place of rest, cleanse my sin, lift up my face. May my God, the Lord of prayer, before thee set my prayer. May my Goddess, the Lady of Supplication, before thee set my supplication. May the storm gods set my prayer before thee. The intercession of a number of gods is here invoked. Let thy eye rest graciously on me. Turn thy face graciously to me. Let thy heart be gentle, thy spirit mild. 3. O lady, in sorrow of heart, sore oppressed, I cry to thee. O lady, to thy servant favour show. Let thy heart be favourable. To thy servant full of sorrow show thy pity. Turn to him thy face, accept his prayer. 4. To thy servant, with whom thou art angry, graciously turn. May the anger of my lord be appeased. Appeased the god I know not, the goddess I know, the goddess I know not, the god who is angry with me, the goddess who is angry with me be appeased. The sin which I have committed I know not. May my god name a gracious name, my goddess name a gracious name. The god I know, the god I know not, name a gracious name. The goddess I know, the goddess I know not, name a gracious name. Pure food I have not eaten, pure water I have not drunk. The wrath of my god, though I knew it not, was my food. The anger of my goddess, though I knew it not, cast me down. O Lord, many are my sins, great my misdeeds. These phrases are repeated many times. The Lord has looked on me in anger. The God has punished me in wrath. The Goddess was angry with me, and hath brought me to sorrow. I sought for help, but no one took my hand. I wept, but no one to me came. I cry aloud, there is none that hears me. Sorrowful I lie on the ground, look not up. To my merciful God I turn, I sigh aloud. The feet of my Goddess I kiss. 
To the known and unknown God I loud do sigh. To the known and unknown Goddess I loud do sigh. O Lord, look on me, hear my prayer. O Goddess, look on me, hear my prayer. Men are perverse, nothing they know. Men of every name, what do they know? Do they good or ill, nothing they know. O Lord, cast not down thy servant. Him, plunged into the flood, seize by the hand. The sin I have committed turn thou to favour. The evil I have done may the wind carry it away. Tear in pieces my wrongdoings like a garment. My God, my sins are seven times seven. Forgive my sins. My Goddess, my sins are seven times seven. Forgive my sins. Known and unknown God, my sins are seven times seven. Forgive my sins. Known and unknown Goddess, my sins are seven times seven. Forgive my sins. Forgive my sins, and I will humbly bow before thee. 5. May the Lord, the mighty ruler Adar, announce my prayer to thee. May the suppliant Lady Nippur announce my prayer to thee. May the Lord of heaven and earth, the Lord of Eridu, announce my prayer to thee. The mother of the great house, the goddess Damkina, announce my prayer to thee. May Marduk, the Lord of Babylon, announce my prayer to thee. May his consort, the exalted child of heaven and earth, announce my prayer to thee. May the exalted minister, the God who names the good name, announce my prayer to thee. May the bride, the firstborn of the God, announce my prayer to thee. May the God of storm flood, the Lord Hosaga, announce my prayer to thee. May the gracious lady of the land announce my prayer to thee. 10. Inscription of Sennacherib Taylor Cylinder, B.C. 701 C.F. 2 Kings, 1819 Sennacherib, the great king, the powerful king, the king of the world, the king of Assyria, the king of the four zones, the wise shepherd, the favourite of the great gods, the protector of justice, the lover of righteousness, the giver of help, the aider of the weak, the perfect hero, the stalwart warrior, the first of princes, the destroyer of the rebellious, the destroyer of enemies, Assur, the mighty rock, a kingdom without rival has granted me. Over all who sit on sacred seats, he has exalted my arms. From the upper sea of the setting sun, to the lower sea of the rising sun, all the black-headed people he has cast beneath my feet. The rebellious princes shun battle with me. They forsook their dwellings, like a falcon, which dwells in the clefts, they fled alone to an inaccessible place. To the city of Ekron I went. The governors and princes who had done evil I slew. I bound their corpses to poles around the city. The inhabitants of the city who had done evil I reckoned as spoil. To the rest who had done no wrong I spoke peace. Paddy, their king, I brought from Jerusalem. King over them I made him. The tribute of my lordship I laid upon him. Hezekiah of Judah, who had not submitted to me, forty-six of his strong cities, small cities without number, I besieged, casting down the walls, advancing engines, by assault I took them. Two hundred thousand, one hundred and fifty men and women, young and old. Horses, mules, asses, camels, oxen, sheep, I brought out and reckoned as spoil. Hezekiah himself I shut up like a caged bird, in Jerusalem, his royal city. The walls I fortified against him. Whoever came out of the gates I turned him back. His cities which I had plundered I divided from his land, and gave them to Mitinti, king of Ashdod, to Padi, king of Ekron, and to Silbal, king of Gaza. To the former tribute paid yearly, I added the tribute of alliance of my lordship, and laid that upon him. Hezekiah himself was overwhelmed by the fear of the brightness of my lordship. The Arabians and his other faithful warriors, whom, for the defence of Jerusalem, his royal city, he had brought in, fell into fear. With thirty talents of gold, and eight hundred talents of silver, precious stones, couches of ivory, thrones of ivory, and his daughters, his women of the palace. The young men and the young women, to Nineveh, the city of my lordship, I caused to be brought after me, and he sent his ambassadors, to give tribute, and to pay homage. 11. Invocation to the Goddess Beltas 
to Beltis, the great lady, chief of heaven and earth, queen of all the gods, mighty in all the lands, honoured is her festival among the Ishtars. She surpasses her offspring in power. She, the shining one, like her brother the sun, enlightens heaven and earth. Mistress of the spirits, of the underworld, first born of Anu, great among the gods, ruler over her enemies, the seas she stirs up. The wooded mountains tramples underfoot, mistress of the spirits of upper air, goddess of battle and fight, without whom the heavenly temple none would render obedience. She, the bestower of strength, grants the desire of the faithful. Prayers she hears, supplication receives, entreaty accepts. Ishtar, the perfect light, all-powerful, who enlightens heaven and earth, her name is proclaimed throughout all the lands. Isa Haddon, King of lands, fear not. To her it is good to pray. 12. Oracles of Ishtar of Arbila B.C. 680-668 to Isa Haddon, King of lands, fear not. The Lord, the Spirit who speaks to thee. I speak to him. I have not kept it back. Thine enemies, like the floods of Sivan, before thee flee perpetually. I, the great goddess... Ishtar of Arbila, hath put thine enemies to flight. Where are the words I spake to thee? Thou hast not trusted them. I, Ishtar of Arbila, thy foes, into thy hands I give. In the van and by thy side I go, fear not. In the midst of thy princes thou art, in the midst of my host I advance and rest. O Isa Haddon, fear not. Sixty great gods are with me to guard thee. The moon god on thy right, the sun god on thy left. Around thee stand the sixty great gods, and make the centre firm. Trust not to man. Look thou to me. Honour me, and fear not. To Isa Haddon, my king, long days and length of years I give. Thy throne beneath the heavens I have established. In a golden dwelling thee I will guard in heaven. Guard like the diadem of my head. The former word which I spake thou didst not trust. But trust thou now this later word, and glorify me. When the day dawns bright, complete thy sacrifice. Pure food thou shalt eat, pure waters drink. In thy palace thou shalt be pure. Thy son, thy son's son the kingdom, by the blessing of Nergal, shall rule. 13. An Erechite's Lament How long, O my lady, shall the strong enemy hold thy sanctuary? There is want in Erech, thy principal city. Blood is flowing like water in Eolbar, the house of thy oracle. He has kindled and poured out fire like hailstones on all thy lands. My lady, sorely am I fettered by misfortune. My lady, thou hast surrounded me and brought me to grief. The mighty enemy has smitten me down like a single reed. Not wise myself, I cannot take counsel. I mourn day and night like the fields. I, thy servant, pray to thee. Let thy heart take rest, let thy disposition be softened. End of section 7 Recording by Lucy Perry, in Bath, on July 2nd, 2010